Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to make this little chandelier. It's going to be in a couple different parts. Um, I'll try to mix all the videos together if I can. But for starters, I'm going to show you how to bend the wire to make this. Okay, you're going to need some little um, crystal looking beads and then these little tiny um, seed beads. And then you'll also need some E6000 glue. And then you will need copper wire, 16 gauge. Um, you can get copper wire cheaper at your hardware store. I just happened to buy this at the craft store. And it comes in the copper color or that silver look. But um, it's going to look kind of like this. This one I'm going to do a tad bit different because this one is not um, a working chandelier. The one I'm doing here will be. And basically what I have done is I have bent the wire for the first part and then I traced it on here so I have it as a template to make sure all of my wires are bent exactly the same. I made two rings and I'll show you how I did that. Okay, so you're going to need to get some wire cutters. Then you're going to need to get some jewelry cutters, I mean jewelry pliers, and some regular ones. All right, once you've cut your wire to the direct size, it's going to end up being three quarters when we're done. What you're going to do is put it in there at the very end and just round it completely around. Now, you want to cut it a little bit bigger because when you do this, you want to have something to bend it with. Once you have it to the size that you need, then you're going to cut it off. Okay? I like to take the other pliers and kind of put them together a little bit so it makes a circle, or as much as a circle as you can get. Then you have a ring. Okay, you would need two of these rings, not three. After you have done that, then you need to make some long pieces like this, and these are going to be about five sixteenths or five and one sixteenths. You're also going to end up cutting some of this off too. Now, what I do is I take it and I put it at the very bottom of the plier. And I wrap it completely around till it's almost touching. I take it out. And then I go to the end where I just left off. And I wrap it the opposite way until it's almost touching. And again, I repeat this process. All right. Now, if you notice, it's starting to look just like that, but only I need to put one more bend in it, see? So I'm going to go back around. I'm going to bend it one more time, and this time I'm not taking it to the end. I'm just going to stop it right there. Okay, and then it should look just like that, and it should fit on my template if I did it correctly. Yep. Just there it is. Okay. Now, once you've done that, you need to decide the length that you want it to be at. And when you do that, you're going to have to cut all this excess off because you're only going to bend it around a little bit. Okay, so I've decided to cut mine to the length that I did, excuse me, to the top. All right. Now I'm going to cut each of these the same exact length. It's very important to get these as even as you can lengthwise. Okay, I'm going to proceed to cut the rest of them and I'll be right back. Okay, so what I did so that I know where I'm going to put my mark, I went ahead and marked my pliers. So that way, when I go and I roll my wire around, I'm going to put it in the same exact spot. 
And don't worry, that stuff will wear off or you can take it off with a little bit of nail polish remover. Okay, so now you're gonna take and put it right there and you're gonna bend it toward this. Bend it completely, just like that. Now you don't want it touching, but you do want it close. Okay, and that's what it should look like. Now this is gonna be a little bit smaller than that one, and that's okay. So if you want it longer, then you need to go a little bit longer. Now, if you would like, you can retrace this so that you have a pattern for your loop. It's not necessary, but you can trace it. Try not to move it when you're tracing it if you're tracing it, otherwise it'll be crooked which is really difficult with one hand trying to hold it in the other hand using the marker that wants to go around it okay so it's not really the best trace job but you get the idea so basically when you set it on there it should fit in there you don't have to trace it you can just kind of set them side by side and hold them up to each other and um, they should match when you do them just by holding them up to one another. And of course you'll have to bend your wiring and everything, but we're nowhere near that part where we're gonna start bending. If you notice, this wire is bent upward. Okay, so now to bend this wire, I'm gonna put it on my mark where I've marked it. And I'm gonna twist it around, just like that. All right, and then it fits right in there. Now you're gonna do this four times with all of your wires. Remember, you're bending toward your pattern. Okay, now once you have all four cut out, you're gonna have to connect them together. All right, the easiest way to connect them together after you straighten them, you wanna make sure this piece is straight, you don't wanna have it crooked. Would be to lay it on something that you're not worried about getting the E6000 on. Or you can use a little handy tool like this. This little guy has arms and everything and he'll hold it in place for you. All right, so I'm just straightening the wires out the best that I can. All right, and they all should be exactly the same size when you do it, or pretty close to the same size. If they're not the same size, then you need to bend this up a little bit more because it's pulling away from that. Okay, all right, so when you put it together, you have to have this standing upright. Okay, and you're gonna do one in the middle. It's gonna be up right here. And then you're gonna do one like halfway. Like I said that wrong, but like one at the like right below, like do you see where these little pieces are meeting? You wanna be right there. Where your little turns come in, and then you wanna be about halfway down from that, just there. 
Okay, and the purpose of this is so you can slide your light bulb in. Now, before you make your ring and you put your light all together, you want to make sure that your light is going to fit through this, because if it doesn't fit through this, then it's not going to work out for you at all to have a lighted light. Now with this one, I just glued all four together, and then I put an extra ring on top. So if you want to make three rings like I have here, you can, or you can just hook your wire or your string through each one of these to hang it up. This is optional. You don't have to make this. I chose to because I wanted to make it where it hangs straight like that without having to go through any difficulties. All right, so I'm gonna set this up to go ahead and glue it. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm using these sticky dots. You can use clay or anything as your assist if you want, if you don't have that other tool. So I'm just gonna give you this option here. They're one half inch and they're a sticker on each side. All right, and what they're gonna do is they're gonna help me hold these in place while the glue dries. Okay, right there, and then we'll glue it underneath in that spot. In the meantime, I want to do more sticky dots up at the top because I think that it's just a little too flimsy for me. And I'm just peeling the paper off so that I have the stickiness. Just like that. And you want to make this as straight as you can so you don't have to mess with it. So let's just see if it's going to fit. That looks like that's going to work. All right, so what I need to do now is I need to take my E6000 and I need to put some glue where I want this to stick. This stuff tends to come out really quick when it's just open. I don't know why. It just makes a mess. I think it's just too much pressure in a tube or something. So I have to clean that up and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have that cleaned up and I've decided to move it to a cookie sheet just in case it decided to stick to my table. Because this is really, really strong glue. But you want to go ahead and glue both rings in the same way. What I do is I just decided to go ahead and dip it since it still is running. I don't know why this glue does this to me, but it does. Um, just gets runny and it like, I don't know, too much pressure in the tube maybe. Not really sure, but it just wants to constantly drip out which is not good when you're trying to work with um, the wire to make it neat. All right, so that's where that's gonna be, and you wanna let that dry. Don't worry about the excess glue on there because you can get that off once it is dry. It dries and it feels a lot like rubber when it dries. So you can kinda just scrape it off with like a nail file or something on the parts that you don't want it. But anyway, that's going to dry. It takes 24 hours for this to dry. So um, probably in about a couple hours I can do the rest of it and then let that dry. And then we can spray paint it and then we can go on to add the gems. But um, check back for part two and I will show you more. Okay guys, so you want to take the four sticky dots that you have once you have the center glued and you want to put them like that. Now the purpose of that is so that you can stand the other ones up next to it. And then you're going to be gluing these here and here to this. Now you need to straighten your wire up so that they can meet. And you can always bend it back once you have it glued and it's dry. Okay. 
So with this E6000 glue, it's easiest if you just squeeze a little bit on the paper. I found that it works better that way. And then you just dip it off with something else. Like a stick or a piece of additional wire. And I'm just going to put a little bit on the back side here. like that. And then I'm going to just press that in there so that it sticks. Standing up. Okay guys, now we have all of it on there, we're going to let it dry and then we'll come back with how we can paint it and how we can add the gems. Okay guys, now we have all of it on there, we're going to let it dry and then we'll come back with how we can paint it and how we can add the gems. Okay, so I have the chandeliers hanging here and now we're going to spray paint them. Okay, so I have them all hanging in this little box, and I've got them all hooked to wire. And then you want to shake your spray paint. We're going to use the metallic Rust-Oleum Gold. And then we're just going to lightly spray them. Okay, so they're going to sit there and dry and then we'll go to the next part. But as you can see, hanging them up like that actually gives you a better way to paint them without having to try and hold them yourself. Okay, so that's one of them. And that's going to be gold. And then here's another small one, a little bit different. There you go. And now we're going to just let them dry and then we'll be back to add the sequences and gems and stuff to it. Okay, so here's some of the things that I had got from the craft store. And I think they'll be very pretty added to it. We'll see how it turns out. I have never tried to make a chandelier before with any kind of gems, so um, this is new to me. And then also I got these little perler beads too. Little seed beads, perler beads, whatever you want to call them. And then I also had picked up this chain. I thought that would be nice to hang it from. And I also had got some head pens. That way it'll help me. And then I got some very thin gold wire. It's 26 gauge to seed the beads on. Possibly, we'll see. All right, we will be back. Okay, so to start putting your gems on your chandelier, you're going to need to string them on a head pen. These are the head pens. You notice one end looks like a needle without the point and the other end has a flat head like a nail. Okay, so I'm using the little crystals and I'm putting one on first and then I'm using these very, very small crystals. They're round. So it's three on there, if you can see that. And 
Okay. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take your jewelry pliers and you're going to put it right at the bottom just like that and then you're going to wrap it completely around it to make a loop. Once you have it wrapped around it, you're going to cut off the excess. You're going to go a little bit above so that you have a hook. Now you're going to bend that in just a little bit. And you're going to go to the bottom of your chandelier and you're going to hook it on your chandelier. If you bend it too tight, it won't go on the wire that your chandelier is made out of. So you may have to loosen it depending on how you're doing it. And then once it's on your chandelier, you're going to tighten it. Now, you're going to proceed to do this throughout the entire chandelier until you get all of them on there. Okay, so here's what I have so far on the chandelier. Okay, we're not done, but that's what we got done so far. Okay, for the next part, you're going to want to have beads going across here. You're going to use your seed beads, and then this gem is a little bit larger than the gems that we use for the bottom. And what you're going to do is you're going to do eight on the left and eight on the right, and then one of the larger gems in the middle. Okay, and how you're going to keep them from falling off is you're going to take your wire and you're going to twist it completely around. That way you have a loop in it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and seat them and then I'll show you how to hook them on. Once you have your chandelier done, you should have your thing seated. Now I didn't do it with the seeds on here because I wanted to show it to you without it so you could see it better. All right, it should have two loops on it and your beads would be in the middle. You're going to slide it up underneath of each one and then when you do, you're going to take your pliers after you have it on there, it should be hanging just like that, and you're going to tighten it. And that's all you need to do for um, your chandelier. Now, if you would like to add more, you can add more. You don't have to add the same amount I did, or you can add um, less. You can put them on a little bit differently. You can hang some off of here. You can hang some off of there. You can drape them in between, and, you know, it's totally a preference of what you think will look good. I'm going to go ahead and finish this with seeding the beads and doing it the way I want, and then I'll show it to you when I'm done. Okay, so here it is. I've added beads on the bottom around in here, here, and then I put some hanging down in the middle. Okay, and then when I install it in the dollhouse, the light will drop down in the middle where the chain is, and then it'll light up. All right, follow Dollhouse Magic Madness and Tutorials on Facebook for more DIYs. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.